Hola a todos, bienvenidos. Hello everyone, I'm happy to welcome all of you, those of you who are in Europe, those of you in America, the US. Hello, another Wealth Talk session. As you know, as of the beginning of the pandemic, we have changed a little bit some of the meetings we had. Remember, we used to have sessions. Well, now it's a little bit more informal with different personalities. And I have to say that for me, It's an honor, it's a privilege to have with me today somebody who really, really needs no introduction. Hello, Rafa, how are you? Thank you so very much for being here today. Thank you. Thank you and everyone for being here with us today in Mallorca. I have to say it's impressive. I mean, what you have built here, what you are building, at the end of the day, what you're doing is you're teaching children, you're teaching whoever wants. Tennis is just fantastic. Well, thank you very much. Yeah, we have a mini town, and yes, we're working hard, more so now than ever before, in such a complex and complicated situation than when we're talking, well, that in some way besides within the academy, which is basically children who live here all day, all year, and train and study well everything else besides our, the locals who take advantage of our facilities and our gym the rest of it is people who come visit from outside and with all these restrictions it's very hard but we're doing our best and we'll see it through and it's fantastic because sports i think are even more important now right after coronavirus being healthy is really important the Well, I think it appears that people who lead healthy lives, people who are more active, seem to be better prepared to face a possible COVID infection. That's great. You know, I have questions here, different questions that have been sent to us. And I have to say that we um, began the year with the fantastic news that uh, you were going to be our ambassador again after some years uh, when that was different. So I have to say that it was wonderful news. But also, you know, this year, congratulations for all of those successes. Your 13th Roland Garros, that um, Grand Cross, of uh, sports merit. I don't know. Congratulations. So what can you ask? What can you ask for this year? <laughs> well, you can ask this year for more better things because it's been a terrible year overall. So no matter the, in my case, because like I haven't done that much. I've only taken part in five tournaments and despite having seen them through very well, it's been a sad year overall and despite me a professional level have had success with this situation you can't really ignore that at a personal level it's been a really hard year because at the end of the day when you live with so much suffering first at a healthcare level but also at an economic level so many people suffering it's It's hard to be completely happy. I have to say you're absolutely right. But Roland Garros number 13, that's hard work, that's discipline. What is the secret to your success? And, you know, I was really impressed when I saw your face, your expression. You were so excited. It was like a dream come true. So what's the formula? What's the secret to achieving this? And how can you continue to be so motivated, you know? La formula. Well... I don't think there's a trick, there's a secret ingredient. We all have to find our own path and what works for each one in order to create your own way of offering your best and offering peak performance. I think that there have been certain things in my life. I think I've had a, I think I've had a, great family that's backed me at all times and besides helping me at all times they've they've eased my mind uh, whenever whenever i needed it and also when i was a kid my family never pressured me 
into doing any kind of sports. Uh, they did pressure me into getting good grades, of course, but when it comes to sports, yeah, I had my uncle who, yeah, he did pressure me a, a little bit, but but I think I've had a um, I've had a great professional team, and I've had great friends all throughout my life, which have, I think who have helped me whenever I needed it and they've known what they needed to give me at any given time. And well, there are times where you can demand more from people and then there are moments where you can ask them for less. But I think that this connected with, in, in con connection with my personality, I think I'm a person who, who is very flexible when it comes to listening and abiding, but also when it comes to create being self-critical with myself and being demanding with myself and attaining my own goals, I think that, well, I managed to reach this point I'm at here today. And I think it's been a happy journey. I'm not going to... It, it's been a hard journey. Yeah, well, there, there are a lot of hard things in one's life. Like, I've had very hard injuries, and that, those have been hard times, but I think I've been incredibly lucky I've almost always had more positives than negatives in my life and I think that I've made efforts to ensure that this was this way no doubt about that no doubt about your hard work and let me ask you this Roland Garros without an audience what was it like I mean maybe it's good because you get the people who boo out of the way but what was it like really no, he no, I'll be I'll be completely honest with you. And sad as it may sound, I came back from having played in Rome, which had been my first tournament without a without an audience. But here, Roland Garros, we had one thousand in the finals. We had two thousand people, and I think that from going to no audience to one thousand people, the feeling you get is completely different. And I think that if we had gone from a full house to this, it would have been a completely different feeling. But of course, with the lockdown, going from zero to Roland Gar Garros, well, I think that this has been, well, you have some sort of atmosphere. Of course, the huge difference is that in Roland Garros at the finals, well, part of my family could make it, a larger part of my team. And despite not everyone being there, I felt more cocooned, and honestly, Roland Garros was perfect. In my wildest dreams, I wouldn't have imagined this to be so good. Yeah, let's see if we can have more and more of an audience in general. That's That would be good, yeah. You know, there's a question which, which comes up often. A number of persons have been very very well known in the tennis world. You really are global leaders in, in you know, the universe of tennis. And people are beginning to wonder, what about the next generation? What do you think is, is going to happen? Because it's as if you had a long cycle, a pretty long cycle. There's Federer, there's you, you know. What would you say about the new generations? I think we're seeing a really long cycle, much longer than... De lo habitual, no? Well, I, I didn't want to say, but yeah. La nueva generación. It's been much longer than usual, but we have to face that the newest generations are already here. But I mean, at this point in time, you're, you're you know, going strong. Well, I think it's clear that we've set a difference for a long time, but we're not that far away as of today. I think that today you go to any tournament and you can see great players and, well, they're fairly younger and they're already topping the ranking and honestly being honest we have Djokovic in first place me following him in second place but then TM is in third place and he's 27 and from there on well you have got Federer of course but then you've got Zverev who's very young Tsitsipas who's very young they're Basically, all of them, they're young players, the, those who are following us. It's, and the trend, that's, that's the trend. We can't, we can't obviate reality, but I think they're already here. They're here to stay. And these coming years, this is going to happen, and they'll take 
over, they'll take control over everything because this is logical. You're the we're in no rush. We're in no hurry, eh? <laughs> I've never, I've never been one to rush things. I think that we're going to. I think that what we've always done very well is to be passionate for what we do, and I think that injuries permitting both Djokovic, Federer and myself, I think that we still have some some fighting spirit in us left. It is true that Murray, for example, he had a really important injury and he's the one who who left the top. So, well, when you reach these ages, well, these things can happen. Absolutely, it can happen, but let's hope it doesn't. You talked before about team, your support, family. At the end of the day, you know, we see tennis as a sport which is individualistic, but what is the role of the team in your in your life? Well, tennis is seen as an individual sport because when we're in the court, we're playing on our own and they can't give us advice from outside. But when as soon as we leave the court, I think that, well, as time has gone on, this has changed a lot. Before, yes, people would only travel with their trainer. A long time ago, they would travel on their own. But nowadays, we all go with our teams. And at the end of the day, each team travels with at least two people. Like, their coach has to be part of this. Whenever I travel to tournaments with very few people, it's at least two people. And usually it's four or five. I think that the only point when it becomes an actual individual sport is when you're in the court. I think that you live with your team, uh, you work with your team, and that does a lot, and that extends each player's professional career for two reasons. First, because we know much more when it comes to prepare people and avoid injuries, and secondly, because being surrounded by a good team helps you not get as tired. That's absolutely true. And what is the role of a coach? What what does a coach have to do if working with Rafa? Well, I've had... I think that I'm not a difficult person under any circumstances. I'm not, I'm not tooting my own horn. What? That's what they say, that you are easy to get along with, yeah. Entrenador. I think a uh, testament to this is that I've never changed coaches. I think. I don't think I've ever gotten rid of anyone from my team. Like, that's real. Well, there's very few people who can say that. I mean, obviously, there are either two choices. I've always found great people, or I think that people aren't perfect and you find a way to work. And when things aren't going well, you blame yourself, not everyone else. And that's that's the truth. Tony left because he chose as much, but from then on I had a different physiotherapist and he left because he had different projects. And then I've had the same physical coach. I've had Francis ever since 2005 and Carlos joined four years ago. So then I have with Carlos and Benito, well, well, basically Carlos since I was 13 and Benito maybe 2005, 2006. So, so it's a good place to work. I'm going to send you my CV. <laughs> I don't know how long we have left, eh? but... We'll have to do whatever, whatever needs dying. I'll send it, I'll send it on, I will. I think you're in a good place. Okay, Okay. I've been told that Stanford, maybe you know, has created this uh, artificial intelligence tool which simulates uh, tennis matches. And, you know, um, even thinking about different uh, times so you can have uh, Nadal playing against John McEnroe. What would you like to do? If you could, what would, what would you like to do? What would you play? I think maybe Borg because the feeling I've always had was that Borg was undefeatable. The feeling I had was that he was an undefeatable titan of tennis. So I think it was a different time, but I would I would love to play him. Well, that's that's good. That's good. And Federer, your rival, right? Ever since always. 
I asked Tony once, what could the bank do to help? And he said a pension plan for that nemesis. <laughs> but uh, no, no, seriously now, I think that he's got an injury now. What's going to happen after after surgery? Do you think that there's going to be changes and so on? Okay, okay. Well, I think that if he recovers properly and he feels ready to prepare himself because his injury is gone. I think he's going to come back in full force. I think he's uh, he doesn't have anything left to prove. And he's proven that whenever he's doing fine, he can play at the highest of levels. And I think that physically he's kept in shape. And if he's able to play in a painless way, I think he's going to come back to compete, and I don't know how long he's going to keep on going, but, you know. He doesn't have to come back in real full force, does he? I don't know. What? I, I think it's great. If you ask me if I would rather, if I'd rather be the one to win the Grand Slam, yeah, I would, but I think that it's also good for tennis that Federer comes back with a fighting spirit and that we have this rivalry. I think that this makes this sport much larger, like looking at it from a global point of view, not from my own personal point of view. I think that it's entertaining and I think it's good for a sport. Absolutely, absolutely. And let me talk about something else. A couple of uh, weeks ago, you participated in that professional circuit. You were sixth, I think it was, right? And um, are you considering golf when you leave the racket on the sidelines? How does this work? I mean, how is it possible? Tennis, golf, at the same time, the same person? Because it's very difficult of a sport also. I mean, I think it's impossible. I don't know. I don't think they're interchangeable. I think that golf, as a sport, unto itself, to it's not very difficult to play. I think that playing golf is... No, 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 I'm not. I'm not good. I'm going to. I'm going to give you a very good example. Playing golf at an amateur level, just playing golf. I think it's much easier than tennis. Creo que es mucho más fácil que... So you devote hours to it, right? Right. Una condición física. At the end of the day, for tennis, you need a physical shape. So you, not everyone, like you need, like golf can anyone can play. Like people who aren't as physically prepared, and and they can play well. When it comes to tennis, I think that you need a specific physical shape. To be a professional, it's as hard. Yes. As a sport, just practicing the sport, golf is easier. And I playing golf. I'm a professional athlete, so I can play golf well. But from there to playing golf professionally, that's quite the leap like when compared to people to play golf professionally i'm a baked potato no, sure, okay. <laughs> but if you compare yourself with me you're fantastic yeah but playing for fun yeah of course i hope i'll have fun but even if i devoted my soul to this i have no chance and what are you better at do you you know hitting that hard or short or what Increíblemente. i think i'm not great at anything but i'm not bad at anything if I had to choose something, I think I would choose putting because over driving. But drive, I mean, I've got my handicap, so at the end of the day, I have to play solidly. I play as uh, I play a little haphazardly because I can't train and I have to see where I can't make mistakes. And what do you what do you prefer, playing with pros or with friends? I like playing with friends. It's much more fun. Oh. Even if they're not great, you don't get bored? No, whenever I play golf, I play for fun. I don't like, like, it's competitive, but I'm, I'm much closer to a handicap of 18 than a professional. Like, I'm completely certain, but at the end of the day, uh, a professional is going to have less hits over me than me over an 18 handicap. I'll have much more fun playing with a friend. Wow. You'll have to come to Odia someday. You'll have to come. Yes. <laughs> I've played many times. Allí estamos. Además, ahora hay mucho... We're there. 
you know, we're present and there's a lot of movement now. What with confinement in Madrid and so on, a lot of people are, you know, doing what uh, what they love to do. Yeah, at the end you're out in the open, it's mentally much better. You forget about all the problems you have. And I think that at the end of the day, this helps you get back into the real world. Absolutely. And I understand also that you are a follower, a keen follower of soccer, Real Madrid. Have you had to choose a, a player, your favorite player, from ever, since always? Same. <sighs> That's a really tricky question. But from what I've seen, I think Ronaldo. Ronaldo... When he shone. I'm not talking about Cristiano Ronaldo or Messi, just not to say Cristiano or Messi, who are very good nowadays, but I'm going to say Ronaldo. Ronaldo was, I think he was. He was fantastic and a lot, lot of fun. He's also a wonderful guy. He was always really good, but I think that before he got gravely injured, he was outstanding. He's an ambassador too, champions and so on. He, he was really spectacular. He was amazing, and I met him when he was at his peak because my uncle played with him in Barcelona and Barca. Of course, of course, absolutely. That, I had forgotten about that. I, I was surprised at that response. I liked it. <laughs> Anyways, I've got here, I've got here this, a little game. What with the social media? I imagine that uh, your, <laughs> your cell phone is red hot, but... Uh, Let's see. I'm going to give you some options, okay? Somebody congratulated you, right, during Roland Garros, and some of the congratulatory uh, moments. Let's see if you know who it was. So, this exhibition guarantees your 13th Roland Garros and 20 Grand Slams, like Federer. You're huge. Legend. Legend is not enough to describe you. So, Iker Casillas, Pau Gasol, or Federer? Who said that? Federer no es. Definitely not Federer. I don't know. I'm going to say Pau. <laughs> Pau? Okay. All right. Another award <laughs> is uh, deserved. Open some. We'll think about it. We'll think about it. it. Another one. 13 of 13. Always Rafa. Spain is with you all the way. Is this Monsieur Macron? Is this the Federation, the Tennis Federation, or uh, the Royal Household? <laughs> Well, I don't know. The Spanish Federation? <laughs> His Majesty the King. His Majesty the King congratulated you along these lines. And finally, satisfaction and Rafa Nadal, hearing him listen to the Spanish anthem. So, Fernando Alonso, Carlos Sainz, Jorge Lorenzo, who would that be? He and he's been a guest recently. He's been a guest. Maybe you didn't see it, but he's... Los. I don't know, Carlos? Los muy bien. Yes, Carlos, that's right. Well, I think that that's a, that's a B plus. Congratulations. Congratulations. But that's, that's grand. Not easy, is it? It really is not. Because, you know, at the end of the day, this, uh, this sort of maybe spins out of control, the social, the social media universe. I try to answer always to everyone, especially when it comes to personal messages from my phone on social media it's impossible for me and I also have this thing of mine which of course I follow up on stuff but if it's not like today's youth who grew up with it when but social media when social media started booming I wasn't that young yeah. <laughs> imagine me I, mean, I, super I think it's overtaken me and I'm not someone who's hooked on their social media, if I'm being completely honest. No, I can imagine, because, uh, I mean, at your level, I would imagine that it's, it's uh, unthinkable, it's unmanageable. Anyways, and I'm sure that you're always being asked about, when are you going to retire? So I'm not going to say it, but what do you see yourself doing in 25 years' time? Well, I think I've got enough projects which I've started, like the Academy. I've got the Foundation, which is also a project which throughout these last 10 years, which, which is turning 10 today, 
we've also grown and advancing in our goals and projects. So I think that I think that will be a great part of my future. It'll be one of my main goals to ensure that it grows and help it reaches more children. And of course, personal calling, I have a team by my side. Well, of course, I've invested in different aspects, which I'm excited to explore. Right, Rafa. And as our customer, Banco Santander Private Banking, do you take care of all of these things or do you delegate or what do you do? I know part of the answer, but I'm asking. <laughs> it's best if I delegate a little bit because I have to I have to focus on my challengers. But of course, I'm 34 years old, 34 years and a half. So of course, I'm on the ball. Um, on the ball when it comes to my finances. I wouldn't say on a daily basis, but usually. So yeah, I think that I'm on the ball. And the fact that I have a great band such as Santander behind me, helping me when it comes to investing all over the world since it's a global bank, well, I think that that reassures me. It helps me sleep at night. And there's no complaints? We're nice to you? <laughs> Nothing out in the open here? <laughs> no, I'm really happy. I'm very happy. I've I've known you ever since I was in Banesto a long time ago, and it's a great pleasure for me to have become an ambassador of Banco Santander once again in this case. And when it comes to, at a personal level, I can only, I can never thank you enough for the for how well you treat me. And honestly, when it comes to the financial aspect, being with Banco Santander, I feel complete in, in the safest of hands and the best of hands because I think we're doing everything the proper way and we are we've got good perspectives <laughs> okay very good and we can talk a little bit afterwards <laughs> offline and the foundation let me ask about the foundation you've been involved for for some time now so how do you decide what projects the social projects and so on how do you decide which ones you're going to participate in yeah. uh well, when we started, we we backed, fi financially speaking, we backed projects that we thought were exciting, but for some time we've been creating our own projects and we, we work in sports and education. So programs and, well, of course, we've got our project with Masquetenis, which, well, we try to help children with special needs. And then we have our day centers, both here in Palma as well as in Valencia, when, which we work with children who are at risk of social exclusion, who have all sorts of issues. And well, I think we've we're making great progress. We're helping over eight hundred children, and we're trying well to create a solid base so that we can keep on growing in this respect. You know, it, we're seeing great results, and. At the end of the day, what we want to do is to create opportunities to children who are facing an uncertain future. And, well, there's a lot of work behind this when it comes to the foundation's team in which my mother and my wife work and, well, of course, other people. And, well, I think that it's fascinating and I think that it's worth it. We've got a, a good scholarship program which helps children go study in the States and they can keep on doing sports. We've got another project in India in which the edu education and sports, well, we're happy and we're going to keep on working. Yeah, you're growing and frankly, what you do is just outstanding. Thank you for that because at the end of the day, society is all of us, so you're, you're doing so much. 
And now let's talk about COVID. Let's talk about the virus. We're all concerned. It's impossible to not think that this virus is going to condition us forward looking. Do you think we're going to be all the stronger for it when we leave it behind? Or do you think that this is just people saying nice things? Taliban. Well, I don't I don't believe that what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. I think Yeah, I don't know. If this were a court of justice, I don't know what we'd be saying here. No, at the end of the day, I understand that one comes from an advertising point of view. That sounds great, but being honest, I I don't think that this isn't going to make us stronger when we're already we've already lost thousands and thousands of people to COVID. So we're we've already been weakened just taking that into account because we've lost uh, many families have lost a lot of loved ones. So I think that just that makes this slogan not good for me. Will we be more aware? And maybe we will understand better some things that we didn't think of before. Uh, maybe. I hope that we will be able to go back to our previous normality. I hope that. And I also hope that this will be a wake-up call, a life lesson when it comes to appreciating all the good things we have in our life. Which, sadly, we have to think that human nature only appreciates this when bad things happen to us. So we might have, this should serve us to avoid daily, ang daily irritation for little things. And I think that this tragedy, well, might make us get a more positive outlook and giving getting a new perspective and valuing the small little things and then you know we talk about resiliency when you've had an injury and you've bounced back and so on is there some kind of a technique do you have any tip that you would want to share with with those persons who are suffering now those entrepreneurs who are suffering so much, who wake up in the morning and don't know what awaits. I think that what served me best, I think, is to first and foremost to be and to have a positive outlook. You can't just enter into a defeatist spiral. And if you enter a negative spiral, well, you'll it'll be very hard to leave it. Yeah, of course, things are rough. and But we have to realize that we have to get up every day in the morning and dust ourselves off thinking that yes things are bad now but we can make the world a better place or I'm going to make an effort to ensure that the world is a better place we have to look at life from a positive point of view and being optimistic I think that that helps us overcome hard times but after that you have to make an effort because you can't just wish your way away wish your way out of this you need passion and you need to make an effort to get out of these terrible situations that's what's worked for me and i think that it's also important to listen and listen to those who surround you who you think are important whose opinions you value and who want the best for you and letting people help you is really important it's something we sometimes forget about sometimes we think that we know everything but i think i've always let people help me or at least i've listened to people and that has definitely served me but of course after this we all have to make our own choices and it's important to have different outlooks whenever you're going to make a choice i hope that we'll see this through and well it's obvious that we will have to make an effort and we'll have to reinvent ourselves and adapt and overcome. Mm. All right, thank you for that. And maybe this is a little bit more complex, but just off the top of your mind, if you think about this context, what would you ask of banks, banks such as ourselves? You know, thinking off the cuff, what role do you think is ours? Well, I think banks serve a vital role especially in situations as complex as this as this one at the end of the day banks 
banks have to empathize because I think it's obvious that a lot of people need some flexibility and empathy on the part of banks, but they also have to back people in different respects morally and for business and so on right <laughs> and also real economic backing that banks give out a message that things are going to be all right we all know here that we're undergoing very complex situations our tourism sector is being rammed by the situation so i think that from the from banks they should project a message of hope there will be a recovery and i think that i think that this might be the time to broadcast this message to their clients and i think that this is the role maybe one of the most important roles that banks have at least from my point of view as a as an spectator, but also as someone who's living this in, in their flesh. Yeah, thank you very much. This one I, I just threw at you, but I like your answer. I hope that we, we are able to do with what you're recommending we do. And um, th this, is, this is a combo of, of uh, questions. And one of the final ones, the long career, so successful, many years ahead of you, a further success, but is there something missing? Because sometimes you talk with athletes and they say, oh, I need this trophy, which I don't have, or this. Uh... I'm missing my daily life. At the end of the day, you ask me, would you? Would I like to win more Grand Slams? Well, yes, of course. Uh, no, but of course I'd love to add more trophies here. And I would love to be the person with the most Grand Slams, but I'm not obsessed. I don't think I've ever been obsessed. Uh, I think about my daily life. I've got my short, medium, and long-term goals, and I've always worked like this. I think that in life, it's very hard to work without goals. We we all need our goals, no matter what you do. And I think that with if you set goals for yourself, it's easier to get out of bed and work as hard as you should. But I personally, what I'm missing is going on as long as I can, as long as this makes me happy, I want to keep on doing this. And if injuries permitting, again, I hope that I'll have the opportunity to keep on fighting for the things I for the things I really want to fight for. Whatever come well, it will come and I'll be ready to fight it. Well we want to be witness to that and I hope that we see you continuing to succeed for many years. Rafa, thank you very much. It was wonderful. As I said at the very beginning, it's wonderful to have spent time with you. So thank you very much for having spent time with us. Thank you. Thank you, thank you for coming. It's been very nice to see you today. And thank and I would like to thank the bank for all of their support. Well, thank you. I hope that you've all enjoyed this session as much as I've uh, done. As you know, this is SantanderPrivateBanking.com. You can watch us. And I don't know whether we can actually improve on this, but uh, we'll do our best. <laughs> Definitely. Yes. Thank you all.